Hi Flosstube and Instagram friends. Welcome to my channel, Contented Needleworker Kim. This is Flosstube episode number 55 and it's March 2nd, 2023. So it's market weekend. I am so excited. I saw this just pop up this morning on Instagram. We've got our own Miss Jean Lee on her way to Nashville with Carolyn's Dash Sisters to pick up our goodies. I'm hoping that all of the designers are getting there safely with their models and their charts, as well as all of the shop owners who are um, gonna be bringing back, like I said, all of our fun stitching. So speaking of, I get to go pick mine up in person. So on March 16, so a couple of weeks from today, um, my husband's gonna take me back to Mesa, Arizona, and I will be there on the Thursday afternoon. I have no plans, so if anyone's having a stitchy get together, a meetup, if you'd like to have one and there's an extra seat at your table, let me know, I'd love to come stitch with you. As well as Friday, I will be at the attic the entire day, that it's the, all the opening hours, of course, and then Saturday um, in the morning until about just a little after lunchtime. So we'll be heading home by then. So if you're going to be there, let me know. I'd love to see you. Um, I have got seven new starts to share with you. I will explain how that <laughs> happened in a little bit. So I have progress on two whips because I had seven new starts, as well as I have a finish and I also put some more strawberry toppers on. So I, I may be all finished with the strawberries at this point for now. Okay, we have lots of good stitching to talk about. Let's go ahead and get started with my Instagram inspiration because I have, this is a start, but Terry has a beautiful finish of Lucy Owen by the Scarlet House, as well as Andrea, deep fried cupcake. Cupcake, yes. She has a finish of Lucy. And Andrea had a couple more I wanted to share with you. This is by Shakespeare's peddler, Jane Pattison. And I've always loved, Carol Saltbox Stitcher has showed this on her channel. Um, I love it with all those pinks, been very tempted. And again, Mary Hill, another one. I, I have the chart, I'd like to get her kitted up and get a start, so thank you, Andrea. Now, Kara, Pink Daisy Stitch has Susan's Little Sampler by From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. And she stitched this as part of the um, Winter Cross Stitch Camp by Sherry Colorado Cross Stitcher. Um, I have again, just to start on this one. And I think I had one more I wanna show. Oh, two more. So the Hats, Hands Across the Sea Samplers has this free chart out. You know, I downloaded and started this one immediately. Just a small start, but I did get a start as well as I want to show you Karen's beautiful finish here of a Sweet Wing Studios chart. This I know, I believe is what it's called. And this is again, like I said, in my cart. So thank you, Karen. Thank you everyone for letting me share your beautiful stitching. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with my first finish here. I'm gonna show you the name of the chart here. So this is the designer. This is where you can get it, creativepoppy.com and the name of the chart. And I started this with, a lot of you joined, um, uh, I did a hashtag bird's nest SAL because as you can see, I only stitched the center portion. Many of you are stitching the entire design. I'd like to stitch each one of these four birds and make them pillows. Even, look at this, even the dog and the duck. I mean, it's just so many little motifs you can do separately. So, very beautiful chart. Um, I stitched on 40 Count Duxbury by Fox and Rabbit, and I did a slight, I rinsed it out with a mild soap, and then did a writ over dye with camel and taupe, just a splash and a splash, and there may have even been some coffee in there just to warm it back up a little bit. So I used the DMCs, and oh my gosh, I just loved stitching this. It has that little bit of confetti or what I call puzzle stitching. Pretty colors. Fabric was really easy to stitch on. And this is a frame that was gifted to me by my friend Gina. It was gifted to her by Jackie. So thank you both Gina and Jackie. It was um, this, let me show you the back of, because this is the name of the, I think it's just a plate. Uh, holder frame. And I put an extra piece of foam core in here to beef it up a little bit. It came with these brackets. They just pull pull out and, and um, spring back. So um, it was in really good condition. I did a rough light sanding and then coated it with that home decor wax by Folk Art 
is it folk art? No, I think it's home decor. I showed it to you uh, recently as well as, okay, so I did the, the floss tube extra where I did a video showing you how I actually resized thrifted frames. And um, thank you to everyone who watched and had such nice things to say. I hope that it was helpful. I know that uh, Molly from Linen and Scraps gave me a very sweet shout out mentioning that I had done the video and she shows the home decor wax that she uses as well. Um, just thank you for that. I'm out of order here. One of my new purchases, <laughs> I actually got a, uh, a new saw blade so that it's going to have, for my miter saw, that's going to have finer teeth. And I'll let you know how this goes. The one I had works fine, but I wanted to get a new one that had, again, the, uh, the finer teeth. Anyway, so there you go. That's my finish. As well as, let me show you my strawberry toppers. Now, these are the strawberries from the Blackbird Designs, that little, I think it's called Deck the Halls, the little book. And my friend Alex, Chasing Alex, here on Floss Tube, has just gotten the book, and she's going to get a start on the strawberries. Um, and I hope that you enjoy them, Alex. I am just happy to have them finished. It wasn't hard. It really wasn't. But, you know, hand finishing is not my favorite thing. So some of them came out better than others. Um, like I said, there are six I've only stitched five. I don't know if I'm gonna stitch the other one or not. I have enough supplies to finish one more if I do. The first two I did, I stuffed with rice. And um, I think I preferred the polyfill. This is the one that, that's got rice. So like I said, some of them came out better than others. I still need to do, the directions tell you to, to um, dampen the um, ribbon on the top. And so it will crinkle up. And I haven't done that as of yet. But um, this one's just polyfill. I like this. Penguin, penguin, I think it's a penguin. No, not penguin. Um, oh my gosh, it's my pelican. My husband loves pelicans. For so, he just likes the way they fly. So you can tell they're not super, super stuffed, but I think they came out nice. I'm fine. Annie, the proper stitcher, says finished is better than perfect. Now this one I think is a little too long. He's a little floppy, so maybe when I scrunch it, with the water it'll it'll um look a little bit nicer but i just keep them all in my little thrifted pink bowl i don't know if you can see that so there is room for one more so those are finished okay let's move on to some oh let me show you very quickly i had finished already again by the scarlet house i had finished sarah barnes the last time but i made her a frame and she got uh, paint. This was very, very gold. I showed it on my Instagram, the prior. And I painted, this has that home decor wax. And this had to have a little bit of black acrylic paint and then the home decor wax on top because it was um, very shiny. So there's my Sarah Barnes has a frame. She's all finished as well as I, uh, among the roses, I showed you this the last time and said that the frame had an awful lot of work ahead and this is how it came out. It came out so nicely. I just sanded it all down, um, glued anything that was loose, falling off, you know, did a little bit of repair work uh, all over it basically. And um, then I did the uh, several coats of the home decor wax and then I actually shellacked it to protect it on top because this, like I said, this frame was just in such rough shape, but uh, it came out really nicely. So the rest still have to pin and put the backing on, but oh, let's see if I can set that without crash. Okay. So I think that's everybody there. We can go ahead and move on to my whips works in progress. And I'm going to start with my Louisa Barney because she hadn't had any love in the last couple of episodes. And so I saw this, um, I'd been wanting to get back to her, but I got to have a couple of stitching. Uh, actually, we just met and, and had fun. It was um, just a short visit with both Roberta Lyle from the Sable Stitchers. And I will get to see Roberta again when I go to the Quilter Station Retreat, as well as meet Linny. Um, but Roberta came to town to visit. And so we had a little meetup, as well as Carol Lee from Stitching is Elementary. She came to town and had a little, um, she was coming to visit family. And so I stole a little bit of time out of both of their days and we had such a nice it was just a nice visit it's always fun to meet people in person and it made me think of it as because Carol Lee said that she uh, was inspired to start this uh, Louisa Barney by Reflet de Soie and I was like oh my gosh I have not pulled out my Louisa in a while so let's get a little more attention on the border oh she's a big girl I think I measured I think it's like 22 inches 
So not quite as long as I thought, 22 um, wide and 18 high. So let me see if I can do the pan. This is where I already had all this part stitched. Uh, 36 vintage cedar plank by Lakeside Linens. And I added on this other side here, I added the flowers, the big pink flower and some more of the leaves and finished up a little bit of the other flower. So just a little bit last night, but um, I wanna keep going. I wanna keep getting a little bit done on her every time. Okay, so that was one of the whips that I got some progress on. And then now this one, I cannot find the chart, which is actually surprising that that doesn't happen more often. When you make videos and the way I make videos and pull all my charts out and everything's everywhere. So I'm going to show you the designer, Cottage Garden Samplings is um, the name of the designer and it's the Songbird Garden series. And this will be the next one that I start. So that's why I'm showing you this one. But the one I'm stitching on is called Summer Bliss. And I made some changes to how I'm, you know, just stitching a portion. I am very close. Uh, I was very close. I didn't have quite enough. And it doesn't mean that I don't think I had a full skein to start with. So I don't think that you would need more. But this part here, I need Charlotte's Pink. So I'll be picking some of that when I go to the attic. And I just have the rest of the leaves here as well as what's up here. And then I'll take a step back and see if there's anything else I want to add. Um, 40 Count Putty by Weeks. And I do, I'm using all the call for overdies except for I had mentioned that I didn't have the persimmon and I made a change to that. So, okay, now we've got all of our new starts. So let me, let me explain how some of this happened, right? I don't like the, I don't like the kitting up process and it takes a lot for me when I want to do that. I have to get everything out. Um, I have to get, you know, the linen box out from under the bed and get all of my flosses, um, make my sewing machine out because I need to sew on all the fabric to fit it onto the Q-snaps, et cetera, et cetera. And it's a big deal. And, you know, I'm retired and all that, but I'm, I'm busy. I, there's not a lot of days where you just have days to make a big old mess get it spread out all over the kitchen table and make a big old mess. And I thought, you know, I have a couple of days coming up in a row where I can do that. And I have all these new charts that I purchased from when I was at the attic the last time, or maybe other things, some Etsy downloads, whatever. And I just don't, I want to get them started. I, I don't want them to languish. I want to get a start. And so I decided that now is a good time. And while I have everything out, and I, as long as I'm in the mood to keep getting up and starting things, that's what I'm going to do. So let me go ahead and share with you this first one is Bedelia. I love that name. Bedelia Bunny from Gigi, the artsy housewife. And um, Gigi has a floss tube out. She has one floss tube where she talks about her, shows a lot of her art. She's an artist and how she um, got into being design, being a cross stitch designer. And I am also stitching the a study in pink, the pink butterfly by her. But this is Bedelia. So she has, like I said, she's on Etsy. It's a PDF download. And I am stitching Bedelia. Oh my gosh, this bunny as part of the hashtag best bunnies S-A-L by Katie the Novel Stitcher, also here on Floss Tube. And I just thought this was a perfect candidate. So I think this is 40 count putty. When it finished, I, I was measuring it. I, th I thought it was 36, but I think it's 40 count putty by weeks. I was very excited to find out that the bunny is uh, DMC 951 and not the 3865, which I was like, oh, that's a lot of white stitching. But I was so much more pleased to stitch with the slightly pink floss. And uh, so, you know, I know I've told you many a time why I have the trailing threads and how I start and, and stop my threads. And um, I'm hoping someone asked if I would do a, a tutorial. I, I can't do a <laughs> camera angles and such. I don't know. But uh, I did want to explain the reason that these two particular threads um, are stretched out across here. They're not just because I will anchor them as I stitch, but they're also the colors that are going to be in the ear of the bunny. And so, you know, if I'm not trailing too far, you know, I always figure it takes me at least three stitches to anchor my floss anyway, and then it'll take three more to start my floss again. So if you're looking at roughly six stitches away, it doesn't make any sense for me to start and stop my floss. I might as well just, you know, trail it, drag it. So what I will do at this point, instead of counting, I didn't, they're not even where, they're not parked where I will be using them. I just pulled them across, 
because I don't want to count and get off and start stitching. I will just keep stitching the white and as I get there, then I will know where those colors will come in and I'll uh, just pull them back out and start them in the right place. And that's just one of the way, one of the reasons in why I do what I do when I stitch. I will try to, I will try to show you. I'm hoping that Vanna, uh, the Twisted Stitcher, she does the away start as well. And um, I'm hoping she'll do a video because she's really good at those. Okay, let's do my From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy, Susan's Little Sampler. She's got several of these where she's calling them little samplers where she takes motifs from a larger sampler and she, she does all the work for me and she already makes them small. So I just, re I love this little um, butterfly. And I did, oh, I know. So I had a big piece of fox and rabbit white clay left over from my Mary Carr and it's 46 count. It's a beautiful fabric. I'm not having any um, problems stitching on the 46 count, I think because it's just such a light colored fabric. It does take my eyes uh, a few moments to adjust to the smaller count. I did notice that when I pulled this out, I was like, oh, wait a minute, this is giving me a little more trouble than when I started Mary Carr. But within, you know, a small amount of time, my eyes had adjusted and it was back to no problem at all. So Felicia, <laughs> the pink flamingo, it does make a difference. And you know, it, it, not that you have to stitch on anything higher count. If you don't want to, if it's too much trouble, you know, don't stitch on what's comfortable for you. But I had a large piece of fabric left over and I, I'd like to use it up. So this is, these are DMCs. Uh, all I think the entire chart is just I'm using all DMC. And again, you know, some of how I stitch, just pulling threads away that I might need later. I had a lot of needles. That, that was the what prompted I had posted on Instagram and I had like five needles going, which is a little excessive. But when there are a lot of colors, um, I will often um, start, a, start stitching and I just drop that needle or pull it off and put it on a magnet and then stitch the other color. And just as I go, I keep adding. Um, I, I don't think I can explain it very well. I, I will try better. Let, stay tuned for that. Now here's another one. I saw this on Instagram. I'm, I have to find it again because I, I can't remember. And the stitcher had brought the flowers all the way across the top. If that's you, put a comment, let me know so I can find your post again. And I don't know that I'm doing that, or, or but I, I remembered seeing it prior to that a long while ago. And then I saw it again, noticing that she did that. It's an older chart. It's by the City Stitcher, Starry Night Sampler. And I'm going to change the portion in here. It will reference scripture. And the rest of it, I think, oh, did I change? I'm using DMC and some Madeira Floss. I had a bunch, all, a lot of Madeira floss gifted to me. So whenever I can make substitutions, I like to use that. Thank you, friend. Um, now I did, okay, so this is 40 count light mocha by Zweigart. And it wasn't quite, I liked the color of the um, fabric in the chart and I wanted to get something close to that, which I really think I did. So I took the light mocha by Zweigart and I did the same thing. I writ dyed it in a splash of, camel and a splash of taupe and um, I just wet I got the fabric wet beforehand I boiled a, an entire tea kettle of water and then put some hot water in my stock pot and then I added um the dye into um a mason jar and um, filled that with the tea kettle water and swished it around so it would mix up mix up mix up and then I dumped that into the stock pot and the fabric into the stock pot. And there may have even been coffee in there as well. And just let it sit until I got the color that I wanted. So again, DMC and Madeira flosses. So 40 count, one over two. I feel like there was something else I wanted to tell you. Oh, I know. I was going to tell you the story. Oh, not everything's going to go crashing again today. Let's see this over here. I was going to tell you the story. So my husband came home from a men's study and I, I had this stock pot with the dye sitting on the counter. I think it was raining outside, so I hadn't gone out to dump it. And it was sitting on the counter in the kitchen. And then because I was kidding up and everything's everywhere, which he's very understanding. He never says, he doesn't have a problem. He doesn't bother him. So I had everything everywhere. And I have another, just a thrifted um, old enamel type um, stock pot with the lid. 
and I put all of my DMC on the rings and stuff. I just put them all in there and put the lid on so that it stays out of the dust. And I had that sitting over by, and he kind of walked in and he was like, whoa, what's, what's with all those stock pots everywhere? And I was like, I know, it's cross stitch, who knew? <laughs> that just made me laugh. Okay, another new start, Margaret Lilly. I saw this one. I was just so fortunate to see this in person at Tanya's home, the Scarlet House. And I, she showed the antique and I just fell in love. I was like, oh my gosh, it's an older chart. I hadn't seen it before. I didn't remember seeing it. And I immediately had to pick that up when I went to the attic. And this is one that I said, I now I own it. I want to stitch it and I want to get a start. So mm, I think this is 40 count antique lace by Seraphim Fabrics. And so I think I had, I changed a couple of the, okay, so it's, um, it's charted in Dinky Dyes and uh, Belsoi. And there's also a DMC conversion. I did not have all of the silks called for. So when I didn't have the silks, I had some of them, but when I didn't have the silks called for, I just made a conversion. And I'm not sure, I have a question because the conversion I did here um, on the darker flowers, you know, they're a lot lighter here. And as I was stitching it, I thought, oh, I'm not sure about that. So I'm gonna stop stitching that right now and make a decision after I finish a little bit more, some other things. Even this flower, this is in um, Scarecrow, which is like a green yellow. And I don't know, I might change that and make these flowers pink on the bottom to go more. But I just didn't know if it'd be too dark, too much border might take away from um, the rest. So anyway, I'm just loving this. Loving this. So let me set my things over here. Okay, I have wanted to start this for a very long time. Every time I go to the attic, I see it. Jean Lee has a start. I saw it at Brenda Holzman. I saw it at her home stitched up. It's beautiful. Tanya has this stitched up. And um, there are a couple of Instagram, I should show that in the future too, um, some Instagram finishes where the popular, that you cannot get the fabric that's called for anymore that, no. Okay, so Jean Lee made a conversion to camouflage, I think, and you can't get that fabric any longer. So Seaweed by Fox and Rabbit is the one that a lot of people are going to stitch it on. Now, I didn't have any seaweed. I do have a darker piece of fabric by Fox and Rabbit that I had wondered about using, but it's not quite as green, it's more blue. And I bought 40 count. And when I do the really dark fabric, that was a rookie mistake. <laughs> I should have gotten 36 because I just need to make it a little bit easier when it's really dark fabric. That's just very hard to stitch on for me. So I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't want to use that piece of fabric that I had. And I thought, you know, I'm going to use my vintage meadow rue because I have, you know, I love this fabric. It's my favorite fabric. And I have a lot of pieces that are stitched on this uh, anytime I, I could. This before it was, you know, you couldn't get. Um, anyway, I love this fabric. I think these colors will look good on this. I think I did make a couple of conversions, um, changed a couple of the colors. I'm using, did I just do the DMC again on this? Yes, it's actually charted in DMC. So um, I may have changed the red. I think I changed the red. When I stitch on this more, I had so many new starts. It's not in my brain right now, but I think I changed the red, the DMC. And I'll let you know. And I have to say that every new start I did, it was very difficult for me to stop. I didn't just kit things up. I kitted them up. And then I started stitching on them to make sure that, you know, I was happy with them. Plus, I'd rather be stitching than kidding. So I would stitch and then I would say, oh, my gosh, you should probably, you know, get back to something else. But I had a really hard time putting each and every one of them down. So here's my Lucy Owen. And I, uh, I, I don't know, because she's perfect here. And this is on the week's gray. And I just saw her. I thought maybe I could do pink, right? I think she would look pretty. I don't know, Lucy Owen. She just looks like she would look pretty in pink. But it caused a bit of a challenge with the called for um, flosses. And so I had started stitching and I had to pull out and make some changes. So some of these are called for, some of them are not. I had to change the, what is that, white lightning. And I changed it to something I will tell you later. <laughs> And I did use the Garrison Green and I did not know whether I was going to pull that out, you know, if I could make it work. So this is a call for Palomino. I changed the center here. 
um, to a different guy. I made a lot of changes. I'll have to give you more details as we pull her out next time when they get more time. But I used um, Bittersweet. So this is like side linen Bittersweet. So you can tell she's pink. And I'm going to make some changes to whatever I need to, you know, that's more gray based. Not that gray didn't go with pink, but this one, it didn't, it just didn't go. The uh, white lighting had the gray in it. So my Lucy Owen. And just a reminder, you know, I sew on, this is actually just an old bed sheet that I don't use anymore. I've been cutting up pieces of it. I was going to use pretty fabric, but pretty fabric is more expensive. And I decided that I'm just too frugal for that. So when the bed sheet runs out, we'll see what gets cut up next. Okay. Another one by the city stitcher. It says it up here, the city stitcher. And I got both of these charts from, um, quilter warehouse on you just, I just uh, Googled it and it came up and they have a, a site. They have a lot of quilting fabric and they had these two charts and I've been wanting this one. I also saw at uh, Tanya's home. She said this was one things that she's a favorite thing that she stitched and I saw it there and went, Ooh, and um, then Olivia B was showing on her latest video. She was talking about some, some charts that she had. I, think that, I don't know. It was just, a, it was a trail. <laughs> Anyway, I looked them up. They had both. Shipping was very, very affordable. And uh, I got them within the week. So Adam and Eve sampler. 36 count straw by Weeks. There are some specialty stitches. There are some eyelets. There's um, actually a, quite a bit of back stitching. Not so much that it's going to be a problem for me because I don't enjoy back stitching, but I think this is going to be fine. You know, like the snake had some back stitching. Uh, the leaves, but it was the outside color was what you were going to use to make the leaves backstitch. So that was fine. And Adam and Eve are backstitched. I was wondering about, I, I you know, I like the way the um, skin color, it's a DMC, 3779, I think, and it pops on the darker fabric. And I liked that, but I was debating about whether I wanted to darken their skin tone. So that might, that might, hold me up while I make that decision. So if you have a really good um, darker skin tone that you like, let me know because I, I don't want to pull, I don't want to start and stop a lot. Um, and I don't, I like the way that looks. So I may just go with that as well. But DMC, I think there may be some Madeira in there as well. Called for colors. Um, really enjoyed stitching this and was excited to get down to the Adam and Eve. Haven't decided. I just haven't decided. I love the whole chart. There's no reason I won't stitch the whole chart. There isn't any over one that I noticed. There's just, there's some Algerian eyelets. Like I said, backstitch, a couple of um, French knots, satin stitching. Um, I haven't decided. There's no reason I won't stitch the whole chart, except for I might not put the alphabet. I might put scripture in there. You know, Dottie stitching Scotty, she asked me, um, when, how I decided to start putting scripture on things on my samplers instead of what it, you know, was charted. And I said, you know, I hadn't thought about it in a while cause I've been doing it now for a bit, but I didn't want to do over one. I think that was the first thing that happened was, you know, everything, a lot of samplers have over one and I didn't want to do over one. So I thought, Oh, I would, I could avoid that if I changed it as well as a lot of the um, verses or what's written on there are just don't necessarily, they're just not something I wanted to stitch or have on my wall for whatever reason. And I thought, well, what would I rather have? And for me, it was scripture. So I just started, I think the first one I did was, what's her first name? It's Jackson. It's another by the Scarlet House. Is it Elizabeth? I don't think it's Elizabeth Jackson. Isabel Jackson? Oh, fudge. I can't remember. I'm looking at her, but she doesn't have her name on her anymore. I think that was the first one where I wanted to change what it said. And so that's just how that happened. It was, it was just a, and now I'm, I love it. And I do it every opportunity that I can. So, okay. Uh, gosh, I think that that is all of my starts now because I don't have anything else on my pile. So I have some new purchases and some other things to chat about. I do want to remind you, we are going to do a hashtag for, I believe the hashtag is going to be stitch a pair in April. I think that's what we said, stitch a pair in April, S-A-L. So uh, the Saturday stitchers and anyone who wants to join, I know um, Judy, you're going to join us as well as several others have said, oh, you have this particular chart 
or um, you can do a free, it doesn't have to be this one, you can do a freebie pair. There are, um, is it Santa's and Samplers, I think, has some freebie pairs, as well as Annie B's has some blue pairs coming out, and that's what Celeste and April, I think, are going to stitch. But um, we're gonna do it in, it, where it's just basically stitch a pair and hopefully finish it into a pair in the month of April. So if you're on board for that, yay, love to have you. Um, I also, this is another one I'm still, I've showed you the last time I had this and I want to kit this up, uh, make the decisions the next time when I go to the attic about whether I want to stitch the tree, this orange color, you know, use these colors. This is NPI and DMC or whether I want to make some conversions and change. There's another Instagram uh, post that I want to share with you when I get permission. She has a finish and she made some conversions to um, cotton overdyes, I think weeks. And so I have to, I'm just deciding on this. So if you've stitched this or you want to stitch this and you have ideas about what you're going to kit it up with, I'd love to love to know about that. Uh, I think uh, Grace, the Paisley stitcher, she mentioned, you mentioned you have this, Grace. So, you know, and a lot of you mentioned that you have this and you'd like to start it. So let me know what you're thinking about fabrics or linens, um, about fabric and flosses. Okay. So now I'm very excited to share with you some new purchases. And this is how this came about. So my 60th birthday is in July. And I know a lot of us are having the 60th birthdays this year. And I was thinking, I don't know that I typically do a, a birthday start or, you know, any, I, I don't know that I do. I don't really track that too much. And I'm not saying I haven't, <laughs> I just don't remember. And I was thinking, well, maybe I should do something for my 60th birthday to commemorate. And I was watching Lisa Smith, Kindred Stitcher, and she was showing a lot of her, you know, just stash that she has charts she'd like to stitch and several of them were these really pretty uh, pink samplers and I just thought you know maybe I will start some stitches that are pink and make that I'll start six I don't want to start 60 <laughs> we'll start six and make that something I do for my birthday like six starts for my 60th birthday and come to find out of course my friend Sally stitching Sally or stitchy Sally uh here on floss tube she has the same idea she's got a hashtag six in 60 or six four sixty and I said oh Sally I want to join your hashtag <laughs> and she's like yeah yeah so I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose six things I want to stitch and just not on my birthday like my birthday is not till the fourth of July I'm not going to say I'm going to start them on my birthday. I'm going to start them whenever I want. But I want to show you the things that I have chosen so far. And some of these were, it was kind of like a trail that came from Lisa's video. Um, this isn't one she showed, but I have seen this now several times. So Cindy C. Stitches. Oh, I should share that. Cindy, I'm going to show your finish in the future. She has a finish on Instagram of this. As well as when I was at summer school, please, if you watch my videos and you had this beautiful finish, will you please let me know below and if it's on Instagram, so that I can share it. Uh, one of the stitchers there had this on the uh, show and tell table. And I just, oh my gosh, it's it's just beautiful. So Sassafras samplers, you can get this from Sassy Jacks. This is a PDF download. I always, my husband just always gets the cover sheet for me from um, Staples so I can have it. Nice to show you. But this is going to be one of them because it's going to be um, things that are pink or, you know, dark pink, which is red. <laughs> this is kind of like a what it like a wine cherry. I have to see what that color is, but I've loved this for a really long time. So that's how that one happened. And then this was directly from Lisa's video. Um, I, I think she showed this more than once because I remembered it when she showed it. And so again, another PDF download from Sassafras Samplers. And I just, I don't know, you know, it's not overtly pink. There's, but to me, I just, I don't know. This just, it's just red pink to me, but it's it's really not. I don't even know if there's any, I guess the wording is kind of a, ring, a red pink. Now there are a lot, there's over one, those birds are over one. Um, obviously there's a lot of satin stitching. You know, I if you know, if you remember, I'm not a huge um, specialty stitch stitcher. I don't enjoy them and over one and all that. So there may be some changes happening. I don't know that I, I you can just change regular stitches for the satin stitches. Um, so I may do that. I may do the satin stitches. I don't know about the over one birds. I just may change the birds to something different. We'll see. This is another one. And then I have loved this since it first came out. It was one of Mama Loves You GV, Michelle's very first releases, if I remember right. And I've wanted to stitch it since then. So Susanna Eccles, and she's definitely going to happen for my birthday start. 
So those are the three I've decided on. Now, another one, um, so my friend Renee Larson, who's also on Instagram, um, Prairie Stitcher 515, is that right, Renee? And we are going, I'm going to get to hook up with her at Quilter Station. And she said, how would you like to have a start while we're there? yes and we decided we not neither one of us have stitched Jane Stanwicks and I have wanted to um, I was watching my friend Catherine Adrian uh, stitching in costume she just finished her not too long ago it's an older chart again I think as well so many of you have stitched her um, it's just beautiful now Renee and I toyed with the idea of changing the house to pink I think Renee really may uh, I don't know I I think I know the fabric I want to stitch her on and I think it would look better in red so dark pink <laughs> <laughs> so I think that is going to be a quilter station start, um, but it may also double, it might do double duty as my birthday thing. And then another one that I had thought about potentially, I don't know, because I know I'm going to stitch this anyway, and I know that there are lots of you I, that are going to stitch this as well. So um, we're going to stitch this together. And I thought, well, that's pink and it's a little bit smaller. So I haven't decided if I'm going to have this one um, fit both of those or not, just stitch it or as part of my birthday. So there may be more. I haven't totally narrowed it down except for the three that I know for sure that I talked about. So if you're stitching any of those, uh, let me know. That's always fun. I have a couple, just a couple more things I want to share with you. Now, I was watching my friend Macy. I'm trying to, I'm sorry, I'm looking around here for the bag. Quaint Rose Needle Arts. She just came back with a video um, after a long while. I hadn't seen her. They had a big move. And so she had mentioned in her video that she was having trouble with her Q-snaps um, that she had switched to a different thing because I must have buried the bag under all of these things. And she was having troubles with the snaps. Oh, I forgot another one. I didn't show you my start on Pretty Polly. I think it goes this way. <laughs> This is the Hands Across the Sea Samplers parrot that I showed you. And I cut a small piece off of um, Earth. Sorry, I'm kind of wiggling that all around, aren't I? Earth by uh, Fiber on a Whim. It's very green, and so I cut the part that was brown out of there um, to start her on. So that's my other start. Okay, so here's the bag I wanted to show you. And the clamp. So I, the clamps on the, on your Q-snaps, sometimes they will get, you know, worn and I have to pull mine up open more often than I would like because they don't slide. Um, but I bought these off of Amazon. I'm going to hold this as well as I can for you. And they fit on my, um, Q-snaps. They also fit on the PVC pipe, which is what they're for. They, when I have these large projects that I make PVC pipes for, they fit on there. I was going to show you the one that was, that it was on. Let's see if I can dig it out. Cause I noticed it was on one of my projects here. Oh, phooey. I guess I cannot show you in action, but they work really well. So if your clamps are getting loose and breaking and you don't want to buy a whole new Q-snap, because they are pricey, um, that is working really well for me, Macy. So heads up there. And one more thing before I let you go, I finished a book, a friend had uh, given me this and she gave it to me in uh, the hard copy form and I looked it up on my Scribd subscription and so I could listen to it in audio while I stitched and I thoroughly enjoyed this book and I'm looking forward to a lot of her other books now will be coming to Scribd soon so I will be listening to them as well. Really recommend this book. Okay, let me look around and make sure I've got everybody from my notes very quickly. I think I did. Oh, one more thing. So Debbie, Creatively Yours, uh, again, here on Flosstube. I will try better. I don't always link everybody. Sometimes I just want to go get to stitching, but I will try to put links to everybody I mentioned today. Uh, Creatively Yours, she did a really good tutorial in the, you know, a little bit in on her latest video showing how she starts and stops her threads. And I am, she does a lot of full coverage. So for her stitching, it would be over one. And I highly recommend you go if you're interested in looking at uh, another way to start your thread. I'm always interested in how people start and stop their threads. And that was a really good tutorial there. So thank you for that, Debbie. Um, I think that's it. Just one more quick little, uh, I was so happy that, you know, when I did the video about how I um, do the frames, how I cut them down. I had to make 17 little clips of that. 
And I was thinking, oh, I really hope that, you know, the 20 year old <laughs> in residence can help me put these all together and upload. Well, he happened to be at work that day when I had finished. I, it was a process, you know, it was over a number of days and I had 17 clips to put together and I went to try to do it on the free program that I've got on my iPad. It's called RU. And usually I can just, I only ever have taken two and put them, to, put them together. And I couldn't figure out, it wanted to do an update or something. And I was like, oh, I just couldn't figure that. So I was like, iMovie, I have iMovie on my iPad. So I, not techie me, I was just, I took all 17 video clips, managed to get them all in a fairly good order and upload them to iMovie and then upload iMovie to, to my FlossTube channel. And I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that that actually worked. So when uh, he came home and I told him, I said, guess what I did? And I, I had to do all this and I, and he's like, and it worked? And I'm like, I know. I was like, hey, <laughs> hey, I think I'm insulted, but yes. I actually did it all by myself. So I was very um, happy that that video came out and that I was able to get that out for you. But anybody who does these uh, tutorials or, you know, edits their videos, I'm just, my gosh, I already knew that, you know, I admire the time that you take to do that because it does take a bit of time. But I just, I was just more proud of myself that I had managed to do it than anything. That was my story. So thank you everyone um, for coming to visit with me today. Let me know if you're gonna be at the attic. I'd love to say hi. Uh, I'm My husband is going to share scripture today. And so thank you, CD, for that. I always appreciate you uh, taking the time to do that. I will, gosh, with my visit, um, I guess it'll be probably a little over two weeks. I'll, I'll have all the fun things to share with you and talk about when I get back and show you what I did get from the store. Um, and I'm excited to hear what you get from Market. So um, everyone, take care. I will see you all soon. Hello there. Thank you again for having me on and allowing me to share some scripture with everyone. The three verses I'm sharing speak of having the mind like Christ. Really thinking about what we're allowing into our mind and into our hearts. Uh, the three verses are out of the New Living Translation. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. The next verse is Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of the earth. And lastly is Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. God bless you all. I hope these scriptures have uh, blessed you and have a wonderful day.